All right, we're back for the Thursday edition of the Morning Pit here on YouTube.com slash Pantalair.com. I'm Chris Peak for Pantalair.com. Excited to be with you this morning as always. Yesterday we said we were going to talk about the offensive line, but we talked so much that we never got to the offensive line. So guess what we're going to talk about today? The offensive line. Should be an interesting conversation as always. Talking about some of the keys with the offensive line, the position battles, what we're really keeping an eye on, who the projected starters are, and maybe the one biggest key for the offensive line this year the thing they need the most and i got it right here in my legal pad <laughs> wow look at all these papers everywhere uh i got it right here in the legal pad the key that they need maybe the most on the offensive line and they just might get it this year so looking forward to this conversation let's talk a little pit o-line where are the biggest position battles who are the guys you feel the best about and what does pit need the most out of its o-line we're breaking it down here on the morning pit youtube.com slash pantalaircom Yeah, it's Thursday. It's the morning pit. It's youtube.com slash I'm glad you could tune in today. Pitt will be uh, practicing in the south side. I guess they practiced yesterday, but it wasn't open to the media. Um, today's practice will be, at least a portion of it will be, and we'll be down there to uh, give you everything we can find about the practice, everything we see. We'll write about it, everything we see during the open practice window. We'll have photos, we'll have videos, press conferences, interviews, and all those things. Just like we've had coverage uh, all week this week and you know since camp started last Wednesday, it's all going to be right here at, uh, you know, right there, the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, and then right here on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. If you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you know some of the stuff we put up in the last few days, all the interviews, all the press conferences. We've had practice highlights from the first day in full pads on Tuesday. Good to see the guys moving around a little bit. Although the wide receivers and tight ends were a little lackadaisical in some of their drills. I, I think that was intentional, but it didn't look great. Jacob Bernowski was hitting him with a... Uh, Hitting with a big pad, so that was always fun. But we had photo slideshows at pantheror.com, all kinds of stuff on the website and here on YouTube. So like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantheror.com. You don't miss any of our pit video content. And then head over to the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com for everything you need in terms of coverage of pit football, basketball, and recruiting. We've got it all right here at panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals. Dot com. You know, I often reference these the the legal pad. You know, and the, and there's a lot there's a lot on here. Um, you know, I'm just kind of glancing through some of the things that 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 have, that show up in this uh, legal pad. Like, uh, let's see. Oh, this this page. This is Pitt's wide receiver running back recruiting since the 2019 class, and how many of the guys that they've signed over those years ended up finishing their eligibility at Pitt, right? That's uh, that that's an interesting list. Um, and we did a, a morning pit about that for sure. Uh, this is um, this is Pitt basketball's four star recruiting. <laughs> Under Jeff Capel, four-star recruiting, who they've gotten. Oh, and also down here we have a little breakdown of the January and February records uh, under Jeff Capel. That's uh, interesting stuff. Again, we talked about that a lot. Here's uh, snap counts for Pitt's cornerbacks under Pat Narduzzi, 2015 through 2023. See that? There's the uh, snap counts there and all the corners who have played. Um, oh, here's, uh, you know, I referenced the list of the time, you know, Rodney Hammond, when he has 15 or more carries, how Pitt is eight. No, when he's got 10 plus carries, Pitt is 12 and five. Here's those games right here. That's the list of all those games. Um, oh, this is a fun list. This is, I wrote about, I think I put this on the message board about Pitt's run defense last year. And I wanted to kind of break down and find out was it really worse or was it better? You know, what, what do we make of, of all of that? Uh, you know, and how do we compare it to prior seasons? And so I had to go through and do the math where I, I took the sacks out and had non sack yardage removed and, uh, you know, to just break down like rushing attempts and, and rushing yards for the comparison that that's all the seasons right there. And then this is the rushing attempts from last season. So I had a lot of uh, info on there, you know, tried to run down some of the most uh, notable wins of the Narduzzi era that was a, a fun conversation. There was, um, oh, here's, I was breaking down the series when I, I talked about, uh, I think in the three, two, one column last week, I, I wrote about Eli Holstein and Nate Yarnell both playing in the season opener. Here's the, uh, drive summaries of Nate Peterman and Chad Voitek in the 2015 season. 
and how those split up. Oh, here's the uh, young players who have stood out. You know, on media day, we asked all the, we asked uh, a bunch of the veteran pit players who are some young players or newcomers who have stood out to you. Here are the guys who got mentioned the most. Looks like Sincere Edwards got mentioned seven times. Francis Brew got mentioned five times. Joel's Goff and Jasir Whittington got four mentions each. Caleb Holmes got three. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. So that was uh, that was interesting. And, um, you know, as we, we pull forward, oh, here's the four stars. Four stars on Pitt's current roster. You know, we had that conversation the other day about where have all the four stars gone. Here's all the four stars on Pitt's roster and who they've signed and who's not here and who is here and uh, how they project in the position-wise. And then there's this page. This is offensive line snap counts dating back to the 2017 season. Now, why would I have offensive line snap counts dating back to the 2017 season? This is where we dovetail in with today's conversation about the biggest key for the pit offensive line this season. Why would I have this list? Why would I have gone through on Pro Football Focus and and written down all the snaps or, or the snaps that anybody who played more than 100 snaps or pretty much 200 snaps at any point in the, since the 2017 season? Why would I write that down? Well, let me tell you. Last year, Pitt had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offensive linemen play at least 353 snaps. Eight in a 12-game season. And that doesn't include Mack and Salve's or Ryan Jacoby, projected starters for the season. Salve's, who was a starter at the beginning of the season and then got hurt. Ryan Jacoby, who didn't play at all. I think you see where I'm going. 2022, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offensive linemen played at least 234 snaps. 2021, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven offensive linemen played at least 450 snaps. 2020, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offensive linemen played at least 194 snaps in an 11 game season. 2019, one, two, three, four, five, six offensive linemen played at least 548 snaps. What am I talking about? Why am I saying all these things? Why am I am I listing all of this off? Why am I running over these numbers? I'll tell you why. Because you have to go back to basically then, 2019, before you find a year where Pitt was able to get through the season with basically just five or six offensive linemen. That's what I'm getting at. And you look at, you know, because I think we often reference, oh, Pitts just had injuries on the offensive line. There's no question about it. And I think it has, you know, considerably impacted the product on the offensive line. It's impacted the consistency of the offensive line. It's impacted the performance and the effectiveness and the impact of the offensive line. When last year they had, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys play at least 350 snaps not including two guys who were projected starters at the beginning of the year. You know, Jake Cradle missed three games. Mack and Salve's only played three games. And Brian Jacoby didn't play at all. You end up shifting guys around. And you throw in sort of the roulette that they had, the, the, the shifting back and forth of Jason Collier and B.J. Williams. It just, it creates inconsistency and it creates struggles along the offensive line. 2022, when they had not... Uh, eight guys play at least 234 snaps and I go down to 234 because Carter Warren played 234 snaps. He played four games. You know, Owen Drexel played 316 snaps in six games. Gabe Hoy was limited to eight games, played less than 400 snaps. Injuries going to the depth. And sometimes it, it benefits you, you know, 2022, like we're talking about when Gabe Hoy got hurt and Carter Warren got hurt. Branson Taylor ended up playing more than 400 snaps. Mac and Salvi's played 830 snaps. You know, probably wasn't going to be in the starting lineup, but the injuries with Hoy and Warren opened the opportunity. It, it most more Hoy than Warren uh, when it comes to Gonzalez, because I think he took over for Hoy at right tackle. But that opens the opportunity, and so that should have benefited Pitt for 2023 to have all that experience for Taylor and Gonzalez. But instead, Gonzalez got hurt. Taylor ended up playing 640 snaps, started every game at left tackle. He was the man, uh, but Gonzalez got hurt uh, or. Uh, I forget if he started every game at left tackle, but he started every game uh, and Gonzalez gets hurt. You have this pattern of injuries really over the last four seasons that you end up testing your depth more than you would probably like to. Uh, nobody's going to have 10 elite 
offensive lineman. You know what I mean? You, you hope that you can have six or seven that you're comfortable playing. Pitt has regularly had to push that number into eight or nine over the last four seasons. Really, 2019 was the last time they were able to get through with, with just six guys. Whereas Jimmy Morrissey was the, the starting center. Bryce Hargrove was at guard. Um, you know, Carter Warren played 860 snaps. Jake Cradle played 548 snaps. Nolan Elisio, remember that guy started every game at right tackle. Um, Gabe Hoy played almost 600 snaps. And they were able to focus on pretty much just those six guys. It was kind of the case in 2018 also. They really were able to focus on just five guys. They only had to go, they, they only had to stretch the depth to six offensive linemen when Jimmy Morrissey got hurt in the next to last game of the regular season. Now, that kept him out of three games. The, the season finale at Miami, um, the ACC championship game against Clemson, and the Sun Bowl against Stanford. But they pretty much stayed healthy up until those last three games. And so you had... You know, Stefano Millen played 900 snaps. Mike Herndon played 850. Connor Dentino played 850. Alex Bookser played 820. And then Bryce Hargrove ends up getting 300 snaps because Jimmy Morrissey had to come out after 700 uh, because of his injury. So those two years, and, and even 2017, they were largely healthy that year. They pretty much got through with five guys. Brandon Hodges rotated in a little bit, but Brian O'Neill, Alex Officer, Jimmy Morrissey, Alex Bookser, Jared Jones-Smith, they were pretty healthy. You know what I mean? You really didn't have the injury issue that that cost you know cost guys games, led to guys missing time, and and led to Pitt having to test its depth and go deep into its bench on the offensive line. You didn't have that in 2017, and up until that last three games, you didn't have it in 2018. Uh, in 2019, they were relatively healthy as well, but these last four seasons, 2020, 21, 22, and 23. The injury bug has bit Pitt's offensive line repeatedly. Now, I don't think you ever really expect to be able to go through a season and only play five guys and never have to rotate and never run into any kind of injury issues. Somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to miss time along the way. You'd hope it's not in training camp where you miss them for the entire season, but you're going to you're gonna have time missed uh, at some point along the way. At some point, you're going to have to go into your depth. Going into your depth and playing your sixth guy, maybe your seventh okay, you'd like to only have to go to your sixth guy. But once you get into number eight, number nine, number 10, now you're starting to get a little bit dicey. And it's not to say that Pitt doesn't have talented players or quality players rounding out their two deep spots, eight, nine, and 10. But it is to say that those guys are all inexperienced. Um, those guys are all, I mean, they're, they're further down the depth chart for a reason. Now, I think Pitt's in a unique position. I, I keep saying about this year's offensive line that if they can keep the starting five healthy, they should be pretty solid. They've got some experience beyond – they've probably got decent experience going down to, like, I would say number seven on the depth chart. I mean, I think if you – you know, you, you have your, your tackles of Ryan Bear and Branson Taylor. You've got two centers who have played in Terrence Moore and Lyndon Cooper. And then you've got three guards who have played – in B.J. Williams, Jason Collier, and Ryan Jacoby. Even though Jacoby hasn't really played at guard, I mean, the bulk of his work has come as, as I mean, the, the, the most playing time he ever got was playing as an extra blocker in 2022, and he was largely a tight end. But, I mean, he's still a guy who's got on-field experience, which I, I think is valuable, even if it's not exactly the position he's going to be playing, which is left guard. So they have some experience depth there, particularly with Cooper, and I, I guess I would, I mean... There's some battles going on, and so we'll talk about that in a second. But, I mean, they have some some experience depth there through one through seven. Now, you might not necessarily want to use all seven of those guys. You'd like to maybe keep it to five or six. Uh, but you, you, you would hope that after four years of missing, you know, losing guys to significant injuries, that maybe you have a little bit of good luck this year. That maybe you can, you know, avoid the injury bug a little bit. That if luck is a thing... If we're not going to uh, assume there's some sort of nefarious, you know, not nefarious, but some sort of other reason why guys are getting hurt, if we're just going to assume that it's bad luck over the last four years, then, you know, maybe you're due for some good luck and maybe you can keep these guys kind of healthy. Now, who are the key guys they're going to be counting on? I mean, obviously, Bear and Taylor are right there at the top. You need those two offensive tackles to stay healthy. You've got more ready to play guards than you have ready to play tackles. 
And that's not to say Jackson Brown and Isaiah Montgomery, the top two backup tackles, aren't ready to play. But I think the, the guards are more ready to play. The interior linemen overall, the guards and centers, are more ready to play than the backup tackles. But I think your top two tackles are key, and I think they're they're very good. I think Ryan Bear is going to hear his name on some all-conference selections. Maybe not first team, but, but he'll be up there, and I think he'll be really good. Um, and I think Branson Taylor should be good. I don't know if Branson Taylor has developed – quite as well as Pitt had hoped but I think he's become a solid player and I think he'll be a solid player this year the interior of the line is really where it gets interesting with personnel that's that's where you're really watching some position battles the one that surprised me the one that I didn't really count on was the one at center where uh Terrence Moore is apparently facing a real battle from Lyndon Cooper um I didn't think that was the case coming out of spring camp. I didn't think that was the case going into spring camp. I, I thought Terrence was pretty solid, uh, you know, had, had that spot locked up, and I thought Lindy Cooper would compete at left guard rather than center. Well, it seems like that's not entirely the case. Pat Narduzzi said the other day that Terrence Moore ended spring camp hard, so that gave Lindy Cooper an opportunity to move up. And then Lindy Cooper told me that he went to Jeremy Darvo, the offensive line coach, and said, look, I don't want to play guard. I want to play center. That's the spot I want to play. He played both at NC State. Uh, but he told Darvo he wants to play center. He wants to be a center at Pitt. So there's a competition there. And and I think it is back and forth. I mean, I've seen times where Moore is working with Nate Yarnell, and I've seen times where Cooper is working with Nate Yarnell. Um, you get a little bit of back and forth as, as there should be in a competition. Either way, it should make Pitt better. <sighs> Those guys are probably talented enough that they could play guard. If, if one of them loses the center job, or the center competition, um, maybe they can move out to guard, but I, I think the coaches would probably keep both guys at center and uh, and then just have a very good backup at center in case you need one. Now, there's also I, I think there's also something of a competition at left guard with Ryan Jacoby, like I mentioned, coming back, and then Jason Collier, who played 353 snaps last year. Collier's a sixth-year guy. Jacoby, I think, is also a sixth-year guy. Um and so they're both really at the end of the eligibility. Look, the, the thing is, Ryan Jacoby would have been the starting left guard last year if he didn't get hurt in training camp. If he didn't get hurt and miss the season, he would have been the starting left guard. And who knows, he might have been the starting left guard and then gone to the NFL after his fifth year of college football. Um, I, I was I sort of went into the season expecting that. I, I thought Matt Gonzalez and Ryan Jacoby would be starters all year long and they would leave and go to the NFL afterward. Well, that didn't exactly work out, the injury bug. Uh, as I mentioned, now Gonzalez did go, but Jacoby came back. J you know, Gonzalez at least has some game tape of him playing offensive line, and he ended up getting drafted. But uh, Jacoby doesn't really have much in the way of film of of himself playing offensive line, and so you know, I think it made sense for him to come back. But like I say, I think he was he was he was the next in line. He was ready to step into that starting left guard job, but the injury held him out. I think now this year he's ready to step into it again. He's just competing with another sixth year senior, a guy who played last year, Jason Collier. I think Jacoby's a better lineman than, than Collier. I think Jacoby should win the job, and I think he will win the job. But I think that's a little bit of a competition going on right now of Jacoby versus Collier. I think they're probably I I think and I don't want to say definitively because I was pretty sure about Terrence Moore and that ended up not being right. Um I think they're pretty comfortable with BJ Williams as the starting right guard. Uh, he was a true freshman last year. He, earn, he earned playing time and ultimately a starting job as a true freshman, uh, which says something. You know what I mean? I think that's impressive. Um, you know, he played like a freshman, made freshman mistakes, but I think played well enough to earn himself uh, a spot, you know, and, and, and earn himself sort of first team consideration coming into this season. And I think he held up on that end uh, through spring camp. And I think he'll hold up, continue holding up through training camp and have that right guard spot. So I think that that's what you're looking at in terms of personnel. You're looking at your two tackles and Taylor and bear. I think <laughs> your, your guards will probably be Jacoby and Williams. And then your center will be more Cooper. Uh, I, I think those are, and I don't know which way it's going with those guys. I really like Terrence Moore. I, I think he did a pretty decent job last year. When I asked Pat Narduzzi about that on Tuesday, I was like, well, 
How did Terrence do last year? I mean, did you feel good about your center position coming out of the season after he started all those games? And he was like, yeah, he did okay, but, you know, he helped us win three games. I was like, geez, it's a little harsh, isn't it? I mean, he helped us win three games. I mean, like, we've asked you about a lot, a lot of returning players, and I don't think there's any of them. You said, yeah, he was okay, but, you know, he helped us win three games. I mean, that was a bit of a shot to take at uh, Terrence Moore. I, I don't know. Maybe he was just annoyed with Terrence that day. I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but a uh, little surprised to hear that one come out uh, of Pat Narduzzi. But I, I still think Terrence Moore is a good player. I think he's a good center. And um, I would think he'll win that job, but Lenny Cooper's making a, a, a competition out of it and, and giving Moore a real run for his money. But again, the key that it's going to come back to is that they get through this season just having to use Bear, Williams, Jacoby, Taylor, Moore, and Cooper. And not Bear, Williams, Jacoby, Taylor, Moore, Cooper, Collier, Brown, Montgomery. You know what I mean? Like, and Enos, you know, and, and no, again, no disrespect to any of those guys, that, you know, 8, 9, 10 that I listed there, 7, 8, 9, 10, but you'd like to get through a, a healthy season, as healthy as possible for the offensive line, which is a position that I think is prone to injury because of the nature of the position. You'd like to get to it through a season as healthy as possible so that when I make this yellow pad sheet next year, because I'm definitely not saving this, this is not organized. This is, this is a, a yellow pad with this much space left it'll be full by if not the end of the football season it'll be full by you know first few games of basketball and then this will get thrown away and next year i'll sit down and i'll be like oh, how many times have i had guys injured on the offensive line do they you know what are those snap counts i know i did it before but i'll have to do it again and i'll do this and ideally we'll come out of this season and it'll look more like this or this these nice short lists than this and this these long lists of offensive linemen of how deep they have to go it down down the roster due to injury. So maybe a little bit of good luck is in order. We'll see if uh, that particular worm turns. It's hard to predict. It's impossible to predict. You never know if guys are going to get hurt. But that's uh, something we'll have to keep an eye on. And we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that competition at center. All right, don't forget we got the Morning Pit mailbag tomorrow. If you haven't submitted a question on panthor.com, you should go do that right now because I'm going to be taping that thing this afternoon. So get your questions in before I record, right? Uh, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Stay tuned for lots of coverage from training camp today. And then we'll be back with the Friday Morning Pit mailbag tomorrow to wrap up the week right here, youtube.com slash panthalaircom.